On May 18, 1969, NASA launched Apollo 10 on a Saturn V rocket. But while the launch was magnificent, as any Saturn V launch naturally is... Coming up on the 22nd mark. T-minus 20 seconds and counting. 17 seconds and counting. Guidance internal. 15, 14, 13, 12, 11, 10, 9. We have ignition sequence start. Engines on. 5, 4, 3, 2... All engines running. Launch commit. Lift off. We have lift off 49 minutes past the hour. This video is not about what happened on May 18th, but rather about May 22nd when Apollo 10 reached the moon and conducted the first ever test of the LEM, the lunar module, around the moon. The lunar module had been tested around Earth in Apollo 9, but this time it would make the initial descent burn, bringing it to within 15 kilometers from the lunar surface. If all went well, Apollo 11 was scheduled to launch in a mere two months. The crew for this mission to work out the final kinks in the system were all space veterans. Uh, lunar module pilot Gene Cernan had been on Gemini 9A, John Young, the command module pilot, had been on Gemini 3 and Gemini 10, and Commander Tom Stafford had been on Gemini 6A and 9A. As of this recording, I'm happy to say that they are all still alive and well. They were also the first mission to carry a color TV camera in the spacecraft, enabling them to make the first live color TV transmissions from space. In terms of recording this mission, they produced an astounding amount of video, making it hard for me to decide what to cut out since there was more than two hours worth of footage. Once in orbit around Earth, the crew relit the third stage of the Saturn V in order to make their translunar injection. Once they were on their way to the moon, they separated the command and service modules so that it could flip around and dock with the lunar module and pull it away from the third stage. This would be the first time that this would be done after TLI, after translunar injection. It had previously only been done in low Earth orbit with Apollo 9. Charlie, we can't be more than about 5, 10 feet away. Roger. Uh, Dan, it's looking real stable to us. We show you closing finally. Be docked in a second, I hope. Roger. Uh, Dan, uh, Houston, uh, you're looking good. We can see the uh, markings in a rendezvous with it. It looks like you just stopped. Roger, how are you? The captures. You haven't fired yet. Roger. Snap, snap, and we're there. Got two grays. Roger. You saw the docking, Charlie. During the docking, some mylar containing insulation had broken, leading to a mess of insulation floating around the cabin. Hey, we're going to have a heck of a cleaning job here. They had insulation all in the seal, all in the valve, and it's really a heck of a mess up here. This was the mission's first significant issue. To quote the NASA documentary on the subject, though. For Apollo 11, it would be fixed. Not everything would be fixed for Apollo 11, of course. It was faced with unique problems of its own that would not be encountered by this rehearsal because the lunar module Snoopy would not be making a landing. The command module Charlie Brown would basically be doing everything it would on Apollo 11, though. Incidentally, since the crew had picked Charlie Brown and Snoopy as the call signs for their vehicles, Charles Schultz, the creator of the Peanuts comics, did some artwork for the mission. With their color TV camera, the crew brought us the first live color views of Earth. Charlie, this is, it, 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 uh, it's so hard to describe. You can go right up past Alaska and you can see the polar caps. Uh, it, it's incredible. Well, we see it all here, Gene. It's, uh, colors are really beautiful. That's great. Oh. And, and the blackest black that you ever could conceive is the setting for all this. Right. When they broadcast what was going on inside the vehicle, the crew generally showed an active sense of humor. In general, the audio from this mission was punctuated by a lot of jokes between the crew and their Capcom back at Mission Control. Yeah, that's true. For one time, you have your choice. If you don't like things right side up, you can go upside down. I just do whatever he says. Uh, I do down here. <laughs> okay, we got one of you in each direction. That's the only way to fly. Reveille, reveille, a ball hand, heave out. 
Price up. Clean sweep down. Four and a half. Apollo 10, Houston. Uh, sounds like we're ready for a naval drill in the flight deck. And here is your horoscope hey, reading for today, good. Apollo 10. Tom Stafford, you should concentrate on finishing things that you have already started. Today's pace will be moderate. Use this time to take inventory. John Young, you will have a slow day today. This will give you time to concentrate on the work ahead. You will enjoy your surroundings and companions. And uh, Gino, your horoscope reads, give careful thought to your working and driving habits. Do something nice for your friends. Once they reached lunar orbit, the Apollo 10 crew was also enthusiastic about the view they saw out the window, of course. Their close looks at the moon would, of course, be critical because any observations would give context to the photos and videos they were capturing, photos and videos of the intended Apollo 11 landing site. How's the uh, view, 10? Charlie, it might sound corny, but the view is really out of this world. Boy, that's, this is really a rugged planet. But also, looking out at the horizon of some of the mountains we can see down here, that's going to be a real kick tomorrow down at 50,000 feet. Over. Uh, we copy that. Hello, Houston Apollo 10. We've got a beautiful view of the Earth here, but it's absolutely fantastic. Eventually, Gene Cernan and Tom Stafford had to prepare the lunar module Snoopy for its work on May 22nd. Tomorrow. You bet your life. Hey, you watch Snoopy well tonight and uh, make him sleep good and we'll take him out for a walk and let him stretch his legs in the morning. Oh, okay. The situation was not perfect though. They had trouble checking that the hatches would not leak prior to separating Snoopy from Charlie Brown. They found an alternative way to check for leaks instead of the normal venting of the tunnel between the two modules. To quote the NASA documentary, though. But for Apollo 11, it would be fixed. And so it was time to have the lunar module do its test run. It left Charlie Brown around 2 p.m. Eastern Time on May 22nd, and it got set for what would be an eight-hour test. John Young stayed in Charlie Brown as the command module pilot, while the other two astronauts took Snoopy to its surface-skimming reconnaissance flight. Okay, Houston, uh, coming up on uh, two minutes to set. How about a sync, Mark? Roger, we copied one minute. Roger. You're right. The big brother's watching. Keep up the good work, boys. You'll never know how big this thing gets when there ain't nobody in here but one guy. You never know how small it looks when you're as far away as we are. Okay, separation. Okay, you can see your thrust is firing there, John, and you're moving away. Okay. Go 5.3 on the disc and 5.0 on EMS, and I, I'm zero on EMS. I'd be inclined to believe the MS today. We copy, Kelly Brown. Okay, Jose, say adios, and we'll see you back in about six hours. Boy. Susan, Kelly Brown, we see you separating on the big tube. See you, John Evans. Right. Have a good time while we're gone, babe. Yeah, don't get lonesome out there, John. And don't accept any TEI updates. TEI updates meaning trans-Earth injection updates, which means instructions to go back home. Before Charlie Brown and Snoopy parted ways, though, they made sure that the equipment necessary for redocking was operating. It wasn't. Hey, John, if you get a chance, you can turn on the radar transponder and we'll correlate the VHF ranging with it. Okay, my transponder is on. 
Transponder is on and the test switch is in operate. I should be getting a radar signal here and I sure don't. John, can you get me signal strength on your uh, fast finder there? I've got you a lot more side on and I don't get any run of radar signal strength. Okay, am I below you or above you? Oh, you're right at me. Okay, pitch up maybe a little bit. Roger. I got uh, 3.6 volts on system, six, system test 1A. System test B, I got 2.1 volts on test. And then on C, I got four tenths of volt. I guess that was unlocked. Listen, you, you have us on a telemetry. Uh, I can't get the ATC signal here. We're only about a thousand feet away. Uh, Roger, uh, Snoop, we've been copying your uh, problems. Uh, we're working it down here, and uh, we've got your load in. The computer is yours again. Uh, stand by on the uh, radar. So well, this is a no-go for uh, DOI. Okay, the rendezvous transponder flight bus circuit breaker is in. Uh, Roger, uh, re how about trying to recycle the uh, power switch, uh, Charlie Brown? Hey, that did it, you guys. It's on. Hey, and I got signal strength, though, buddy. What do you know about that? And I've got, got 3.2 on my AG. You got so much uh, AGC, I don't know what to do with it. John, I could kiss you. It was Charlie's idea to cycle a switch. That would never occur to me. It was, it was our Ed's okay, idea well, that's there. Pretty good, huh? That's right, John Young just turned it off and then on and then it worked. Uh, probably a solution for a lot of electronic problems. And that took a lot longer than it seemed because I cut out a lot of, uh, of the exchanges. From here on for a bit, we'll listen in to some snippets from the original audio as the astronauts do their work. And uh, Charlie Brown, uh, Houston, uh, we noticed the red out temp a little high. And uh, if you get a uh, little stuffy in there, we recommend you activate the secondary evaporator and the secondary pump. And then when you cool down, you can just turn off the evap and leave the pump running. Uh, your choice, over. All right, the cabin temperature is 74, and the suit temperature is, is uh, 51. Can't be dead. Sounds like uptown, over. It's someplace, I mean, tell you. And uh, Charlie Brown, if you hear some good words from uh, Snoop, we still don't have any data. And uh, uh, if uh, they pass on to you about their P-52, we'd be interested. Over. Roger. Hey, uh, Snoopy, how's your P-52 going? P-52 is the pro is the uh, platform realignment in the lunar module. Uh, did you talk to Snoop there, uh, Charlie Brown, over? Yeah, I... Hey, Snoopy, this is Charlie Brown, over. Is, uh, Gino Key and his mic all the time? Sometimes I hear him and sometimes I don't. Roger, did you hear that, uh, Houston? Uh, that's negative, Charlie Brown, you over. You've been monitoring his descent fuel... You've been monitoring his descent stage fuel pressure. The gauge went to zero doing a P-52 burn. Roger, Charlie Brown. Uh, we have no data at all. Over. Okay. Snoopy, this is Charlie Brown. Houston doesn't have any data from you today. Right now. They're down there among the rocks. Mumbling about the boulder things right now. I uh, Roger, Charlie they Brown. They just saw it rise. I uh, Roger. They, they say they're looking up at the looking up at the uh, horizon now. Roger. Hello, Houston, Houston. This is Snoopy. Right, Snoop. Go ahead. 
We is going. We is down among them, Charlie. Roger, I hear you weaving your way up the freeway. Uh, can you give me a post burn report? Over. Yeah, as soon as I get my breath. Oh, Charlie, we just saw Earth rise, and it's got to be magnificent. Right, we copy. Well, you can also tell Jack Smith that there's enough boulders around here to fill up Galveston Bay, too. He's copying, Tom. As you can probably already tell, the communication system was not great, and for Apollo 11, that would only be partially fixed. But we'll continue to struggle on, and they'll have to repeat a lot of their observations later on to Mission Control. Uh, Roger, Snoop, we have you. Uh, should be approaching San Tarantias anytime soon. Roger. Okay, Houston, I got him in the optic. Yeah. Hey, great fantastic. Show. Hey, great show, Charlie Brown. We can tell that this area is definitely lower than that highland area. This is a whole general area. Okay, uh, Snoop, uh, could you, are you coming up on uh, well, we expected uh, surface washout? Uh, can you uh, comment on that? Over. Boy, they ain't down there among them. Roger, I bet it looks like they're really hauling the mail. Huh? They're doing anything. Surprisingly enough, Charlie, it really doesn't look like we're moving too fast down here. It's a very nice, pleasant pace. It appears like we're coming up uh, on my side on Tarantia's G, and I believe Tom's got Tarantia's H right there on his side. Things come out of the horizon differently. They seem to come over the horizon and be much closer to you down here uh, than up there at 60 miles. And again, the craters in this area are craters that are dug out of the surface, and not craters that are flowing back from the surface to the high rim. Uh, Snoop, uh, Houston, uh, request uh, down voice backup, over. Snoopy, Houston wants you to go to down voice backup, over. That's where he is, he's in down voice backup. This is Apollo Control at 102 hours, 21 minutes. We're about a minute away from uh, acquisition of Charlie Brown. About four minutes away from acquisition of Snoopy. Snoopy will be making another low pass over the lunar surface this time on the order of 11 nautical miles. And we'll perform uh, staging, jettisoning the descent stage, and then 10 minutes after staging the insertion maneuver. Snoop, uh, Houston, the app looks good to us. Over. Okay. Roger, Roger Houston. We're about uh, four minutes and 23 seconds from staging. Okay, Tom, and uh, get out of here. The clock is set. Snoop, going up. Snoop, Houston, over. Go ahead, Houston. Roger, we copy eight minutes to staging, over. Roger, it's eight minutes marked. Now, 7.59.58. That's the firm. Uh, we're with you. That was my mistake. It's uh, it's four minutes to our 14 minute uh, check. We're eight minutes to staging. 7:50. Copy out. Just like to think ahead. Next up came the most dangerous incident during the mission, and that was when they separated the descent module. They were supposed to be in abort mode, and then the ascent module would bring them back up to orbit to meet up with the command module. But, unfortunately, they entered the command into the flight computer twice, and that took it out of the abort mode, and then the ascent module didn't know how to orient itself and began spinning. And that caused a little bit of confusion until they got it under control. And so that's what we'll hear next. I didn't know exactly how to simulate this malfunction in Kerbal Space Program, so you'll see the separation occur more or less normally in the program here. Let's go, okay. Call up 47 at one minute. Okay, Tom, I'll thrust aft. Two feet per second, I'll stop. I'll start thrusting forward and you stage fire. Got your master arm on? Okay. 
the way the map is set for a light vehicle. We'll do it this way. Okay, you ready? Ready? Okay, uh, roll is 180 and pitch is 233. 233. Uh, Snoop Houston, we show you close to Gamma Lock. Yeah, okay, something went wild there on that staging. And we're all set. We didn't lock it. We're going ahead to the auto maneuver. Roger. Babe, I don't know. I can put my eggs in inertial, uh, in inertial, though, to verify that we're at the right attitude, babe. Huh? Put it, okay, just so it's in inertial. Okay, because in case we have to go to it, that's what we want. Let's get that egg. Wait a minute. Got to get this damn thing. Charlie, how was the stage? Good, huh? Wait till that thing blinks. Charlie Brown, uh, Houston, they got hey, staging. Uh, they uh, had a wild uh, gyration, though, but they got it under control. Over. Roger. After that, Mission Control got the crew of the lunar module to repeat some of their observations that were missed when the communications were garbled, and also had a few more instructions about han handling the film that was recorded during the flight. Hello Houston, uh, this is Snoopy. We're right over by Moki and the landing site again. We're getting a view of it now from 45 miles and again, uh, just extrapolating from below, it looks like you got about 25 to 30 percent clear area. In there, over. Roger, we copy uh, Snoop, over. Roger, uh, use uh, two F stops higher, Snoop, on that uh, film. And uh, Tom, if you got a chance to talk a minute, could you describe uh, landing site two uh, from eight miles? We didn't uh, have you in communications at that time. Okay, uh, Houston, go ahead. So you were cut out. So you want me to describe the landing site two again? Uh, right, uh, you, we can get it later, uh, Snoop. Uh, it's a little busy now. We'll get it later. We were out of communications with you at that time, but we'll get it later. Over. Yeah, okay. The approach in looks a lot smoother than some of the orbiter photos show. It still estimates 25 to 30 percent, a semi-clear area. So if uh, the limb has enough hover time, at least from what we could see at 50,000 feet, it should not be a problem. As far as you come down in the wrong area and you don't have the hover time, you're going to have to shove off. Hello, uh, Snoop, uh, Houston. If uh, you use any different f-stops on the film, uh, we'd uh, like for you to mark it so we can process it right over. That ought to be a ball. Right. I'll try, Charlie. I'll do my best. Okay, Gino, that was just a hint. Uh, don't worry about it. Sorry. Don't be sorry. Hey, you guys are floating in the world uh, out there sideways. Okay. As the Earth came up uh, uh, on this Earth Day, I guess you would call it, uh, the North Pole was to the right, the South Pole was uh, to the uh, left. And uh, it looks like it's, you see a lot of clouds over the Pacific Ocean. We're kind of busy. It didn't take much time to notice. It was a beautiful sight. Over. Roger, we're we're here and still spinning. Okay. Then all that was left was for Snoopy to meet up with Charlie Brown again. I should note that all the burns that were required for this mission were trivial compared to the capacity of the descent module and the ascent module. And uh, in fact, the ascent module was not full. It didn't have all the fuel that it would normally have because they wanted to prevent the the Apollo 10 crew from potentially making the first moon landing. Uh, so that's a little bit of a side, but it did have a lot of its fuel and they weren't going to use most of it. So when they abandoned Snoopy, they sent a remote signal to have it boost into solar orbit. So Snoopy 
uh, right now is still in solar orbit. I guess that's somewhat of a consolation. Okay, Houston, this is Snoopy. Um, we're at 60 nautical miles closing, and our dot looks real fine. I'm sure you're reading it down there. Everything looks real good from here. And I still don't have his flashing light from this distance of 60 miles. Over. Uh, Roger, Tom. Uh, we copy. We got you plotting right down the line on your charts. Over. Uh, Roger, thank you, Charlie. It's looking good here. Uh, Snoopy, this is Houston. Howdy, Reed. Looks like this tip. Hey, Joe, uh, we're about ready to dock. Stand by. Very yeah, good. We'll call us. We'll call you. Roger that. Okay, John, you're into about five feet, babe. Looking beautiful. Got a capture? Okay, the thrusters are off. We got a capture, John. Fire when you're ready. Everything looks good in here, Tom. Okay, babe. Oh, well, it looks good. Solid as a rock in the cabin, babe. All right, babe. I can see you moving on it. Hit it. Oh, we got him. Stop that man off. We got him, John. We heard him in here. Hello, Houston. Snoopy and Charlie Brown are hugging each other. <laughs> Roger that. We heard him down here. Okay, let's stay. Let's stay in our helmets, babe, uh, until we get this thing spread away. Okay, John, that was beautiful. Just beautiful, babe. Okay, now, John, let me ask you one thing. Do you want me to pressurize that lift tunnel through our hats to save you from blowing that mylar out again? Okay, do you want us to pressurize the tunnel? Okay. And we is back home. And with that, and the subsequent undocking of Snoopy, and that got complicated in my little mission because Snoopy accidentally took the heat shield from, from Charlie Brown. Not very nice of Snoopy, but not very detrimental to the mission in Kerbal Space Program, possibly detrimental to the mission in real life. But we'll leave that aside for now and say Apollo 10, of course, major success. In two months, they were able to launch Apollo 11, and that will conclude the story of Charlie Brown and Snoopy in orbit around the moon. Thank you for watching this presentation of Today in Space History for May 22nd, the testing of the lunar module in the Apollo 10 mission around the moon, and special thanks to Frizank for the excellent Apollo Saturn V model used in this video.